Hey guys, this is Tyler Zombro with Tread Athletics, and today we wanted to touch on the top pitches in baseball, specifically looking at four seam fastballs. Ultimately, in this video, we want to touch on a lot of characteristics of the pitch, obviously looking at outcomes on it, usages, but then also talk about a lot of the spin metrics behind it so you guys at home can really use this as a reference to say, here are the elites of the game, here's what they're doing, where are my metrics compared to this, do I need to be chasing after this? For instance, one thing you're going to walk away with in this video video is realizing that 100% spin efficiency on a four seam fastball is not the end all be all. Obviously that became a popular fad here within the last few years, but not always necessary. So without further ado, let's walk through a lot of these guys. So first off, we have Justin Verlander, a guy who has seemed to not age over the back half of his career. He throws his four seam fastball 51% of the time. His whiff rate is 18%, which you'll see is going to be on the lower side, but ultimately inducing some weak contact, good put away rate so he's doing all right with that so for justin verlander specifically profile on his fastball is he's averaging 95 miles an hour it's 97 percent spin efficient and his spin base is one o'clock so again i know carry becoming such a big thing people want to get towards 12 o'clock really cheat to that push not always necessary you can see jv with the illusion of how much that ball carries and we know he's a little bit of an uphill thrower like he's still not to 12 o'clock so continuing to try to push that axis higher and higher not always super beneficial next guy on the list is going to be Carlos Rodon so Rodon's unique he throws this pitch 61% of the time which as you know we harp on not throwing more than 50% heaters but when you have an elite of the elite pitch you can throw it a little bit more and for Rodon it's also some approach angle so we know with him he does have the slightly lower release height which can make that four seam play up a bit and he's throwing it 61% of the time and his whiff rate is up to 27% on it so getting a ton of whiffs i mean you can see even comp to verlander he's getting a ton more maybe that's a lot of deception with the lower release height when i go back and look at all of these top four seams the location in which these are being thrown is immaculate you can see that they're all just hammered top third of the zone the next guy spencer strider has a little bit more variance but specifically when i've looked at verlander rodon and then luis castillo they're throwing these four seams in really really good spots so an important note is hey i might want to chase after carry whatever but let's say i'm sacrificing maybe two inches of carry but if i can throw it in the top third boxes every time odds are that's going to be much more to my benefit so back to Rodon He's averaging 95.7 miles an hour with this pitch, 95% spin efficient at an 1115 axis observed 1130. So again, this is somebody who's not 100% efficient, actually has that slight element of cut, which can be really beneficial. It's, it's an illusion to the hitter. Guys don't kind of expect that. So again, chasing after 100% spin efficiency, not always the move. Next guy on the list is going to be Spencer Strider. He's a guy, again, who gets a little bit of that approach angle. I talked about him not having elite elite command with it, but he is attacking it in the zone a ton. He's throwing this pitch 67% of the time. I mean, that's a huge number. Obviously, it's working right now. You can see that the whiff rate for him is huge, just over 27%. So obviously having a ton of success with it thus far. The big thing for him, obviously, he's a good velo guy, averaging. 98.2 miles an hour this year so plus plus velocity spin based is 1245 observed 1230 at 94% efficient so again we're going through this list and you can see the last two guys are sub 95% efficient on their four seams again not being the end-all be-all for four seam fastball success the last guy that I wanted to touch on today is going to be Luis Castillo. Now he's a little bit different on this list because first off, he only uses this pitch 31% of the time, but how he performs so well with it is definitely approach angle. And he has a bigger element of cut than the rest of the guys on this list. And you'll see that a lot from lower slot guys. It's a deceptive component with the four seam cut to still have a lot of backspin to get over bats. So guys are swinging and missing underneath this pitch. So Luis Castillo, again, being a lower slot guy, playing that approach angle good velocity averaging 97 only 87 percent spin efficient on this pitch for him so his actual spin axis is 145 observed movement is 115 so again at 145 axis at 87 percent efficient it's a pretty good element of cut to that four seam but again it's creating backspin going to play up 
Definitely deceptive for as low of a slot as he has, because again, a lot of people would suspect the sinker coming out of that slot. He's done a great job of balancing these two throughout the year. So again, you're seeing four-seam fastball success. There are a bunch of different ways to get there. It's not like all these guys are cheating to get to a super high slot to a 12 o'clock axis at 100% efficient. There's a variety of ways to do it. So if you find yourself falling into one of these slots, I encourage you to get online, go to Savant, look at the spin numbers, look at the efficiency, look at the spin-based axis, and really work from there. So there are a bunch of different ways to get it done. Again, obviously the trend with all these guys thrown in good locations with plus velocity speaks to the importance of training for velocity gives you much more wiggle room in terms of that pitch profile but these are examples of the top performing fastballs in baseball right now so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one